Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee in the Corral. I'm Abigail Hobbs. This is my faithful friend Deo here with me this morning. And we are here again for another week to talk with you guys. Um, I'm currently sitting inside the horse trailer because it's really windy today. So thankfully, I have this horse trailer that I can sit in but I'm still get to be in the corral with the horses. So they're right on the other side of the camera. They are um, eating up the little bits of grass that I moved the truck and trailer this morning to be able to have it blocking the wind. And uh, it opened up this area of fresh grass that the horses hadn't been able to get to. So now they're all over there kind of fighting over that green grass. Anyways, I have Dale with me today. And um, I think I talked about the dog attack that happened two weeks ago to him. Anyways, he's healing slowly. He still has stitches in. I let him come out with me today and I took his cone off as long as I keep, it, keep an eye on him and make sure he's not biting at his stitches. Um, I think he can be here with us today. He really loves being outside and he loves podcasting with me, don't you buddy? So anyways, he is doing better. It's just a slow process. There was an area where they had stitched up on his butt um, a, a long like gash deep wound anyways this stitch is kind of ripped apart in one spot I think because it was so mangled so they end up taking those out Nate took them into the vet a couple days ago they took those specific stitches out and um, it's just right now kind of a gaping wound but um, there's really no way to stitch it together because it was so mangled so anyways the vet thinks it'll be fine. It is going to take some time to heal. And we are putting honey on it. Who knew to put honey on a wound? I didn't know. Anyways, it has antifungal and antibacterial properties. So every day we clean it and we put some honey on it. How cool is that? I didn't know. So there's a little tidbit for you if you have an animal with a wound. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a vet. Don't, don't take my advice. But I thought that was interesting. Ah, <sighs> anyways, so last week I talked about um, Deo getting attacked. That's how I started out and just how it kind of been a week. Well, uh, the day after I posted that podcast, our well pump went out. So all of our water wasn't working. Uh, we couldn't use the toilets, the showers, couldn't, didn't have any drinking water, nothing. None of the water worked. So we had two days of craziness. Um, and Nate worked really hard to replace the pump himself because we couldn't get any well companies to come out. They were like backed up with other jobs. And anyways, long story short, <laughs> it was like, I swear, one thing just keeps adding on to the next. Um, I was like, are you kidding me? Now we don't have any water. But Nate was awesome and he worked really hard. He got it temporarily fixed until the well people could come out and finish it up and disinfected and anyways we're still drinking store-bought water at the moment because they had to um, you know when you replace it and you pull all that piping out and put new piping in it's not safe to drink so they have to put bleach in the water and you got to run that through your system anyways it's safe to drink now but we're still drinking store-bought water because it still tasted like bleach a little bit Ugh, that was gross so Anyways, we have a new pump, so that's good. I, the old one just died, I guess. Um, and Deo's feeling better. Th these things, I don't know. I mean, what I try to do is just, I used to be like, what is the lesson like in all of this? And now I'm, I'm deciding like, I don't know that there's a lesson in every, <laughs> shitty thing that comes your way but what i am learning and i wrote a blog about this and it is coming out tomorrow i believe on bike to type.com um it's just about gratitude a little bit i'm learning to find gratitude in the midst of the shit uh, because that's just one of the best ways for me to survive it and so even in the middle of the well pump going out i was like i'm really grateful that like Nate is so savvy and he he's not afraid to learn things and try things. 
Um, so he's, no, 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 Dale, come here. Why are you getting, I think he's afraid the horses are going to come in the trailer. Hi, Fayana. Fayana came over here to say hi. Hi, sweet girl. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Anyways, just grateful that Nate could temporarily fix it so we could be up and running before too long. I don't know. So it's like in the midst of all these things, like I'm glad we still have our dog. Like had Dale been the kind of dog that fought back, he would have gotten killed because that thing would have ripped his neck open. So I don't know. That's what I've been trying to do. Like life doesn't seem to give us a break at the moment. And so like, what are the ways I can find gratitude in the midst of that? Anyways, I want to read the lyrics to a song today. Um, there's a song that came on it. I don't remember how I found it. Uh, it's by, and I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong. Sarah Borelli's. I probably pronounced it wrong. I can tell you the spelling to that. Anyways, I heard it a while ago and it is one of my favorite songs in the history of songs. <laughs> And I wanted to, I brought the lyrics, I printed them out and I wanted to read them today because I've just been thinking a lot about it and I've, play, I've been playing the song a lot recently and it's a really inspiring song for me. It helps me to um, stay aligned with really what I want for my life and my values. And when I get discombobulated and confused and frustrated with all the stuff that happens in life and the busyness, like this helps me to realign, I feel like. So, I'm gonna start out by reading the lyrics to the song. So the song is called Chasing the Sun. Let me see if I can get this open. By Sarah Borelli's, if that's how you say her name. I lost Deo and hopefully he's not gone too far. Anyways, okay, here it is. It's a little windy. I hope it's not too windy still in the microphone. It's a really old city stuck between the dead and the living. So I thought to myself, sitting on a graveyard's shelf, as the echo of heartbeats from the ground below my feet filled a cemetery in the center of Queens. I started running the maze of the names and the dates, some older than others, the skyscrapers, the little tombstone brothers, with Manhattan behind her, three million stunning reminders built a cemetery in the center of Queens. You said, remember that life is not meant to be wasted. We can always be chasing the sun. So fill up your lungs and just run, but always be chasing the sun. So how do you do it with just words and just music? Capture the feeling that my earth is somebody ceiling? Can I deliver in sound the weight of the ground of the cemetery in the center of Queens? There's a history through her, sent to us as a gift from the future, to show us the proof. More than that is to dare us to move and to open our eyes and to learn from the sky, from a cemetery in the center of Queens. You said that life is not meant to be wasted. We can always be chasing the sun. So fill up your lungs and just run, but always be chasing the sun. All we can do is try and live like we're still alive. It's a really old city stuck between the dead and the living. So I thought to myself, sitting on a graveyard shelf, and the gift of my heartbeat sounds like a symphony played by a cemetery in the center of Queens. You said that life, oh sorry, remember that life is not meant to be wasted. We can always be chasing the sun. So fill up your lungs and just run, but always be chasing the sun. All we can do is try and live like we're still alive. Oh my God, I love this song, you guys. I fucking love it. Hi, Sky. Sky came over here to say hi. Do you love the song too? Huh? 
Do you love the song, Sweet Girl? <sighs> there are so many things I love about that song, but mainly it's that let's not be living life half-heartedly. Let's not be wasting our breath. And those, those thoughts become really real when you're in a graveyard and you're realizing that this is not forever. Like this is an opportunity that we are given a gift that we have. Life is a gift. How are we using it? Are we living it to the full potential? And I love how she sings in the song, fill up your lungs and just run, but always be chasing the sun. So this, this past weekend, my girls had a dance recital and they were dancing at Solomon's Dance Studio and I, I love, I love Solomon's. I love how they have treated my girls. They've been amazing. My girls have learned amazing things there. Um, but, and they love dancing. But for recital, what they do is they have actually four different performances where they do the same show four different times. And so the girls got a chance to do their dances four different times. The whole show is five hours long. So Thursday night, Friday night, and two shows on Saturday. So that was our weekend and it was crazy. So if you can imagine each show is five hours and they perform it four times. That is a lot of time. <laughs> to spend at recital and so they have to get there early and do all their makeup and costumes and have all their outfit changes ready and anyways it's a big deal it's a shebang okay um and it was exhausting it was so exhausting i was really 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 grateful that i had jennifer because we tag team since since my oldest is in high school and my youngest is in fifth grade like we had to go back and forth between rooms and help them switch out and hair and makeup and all that and and Jennifer was amazing she she did all the hair and makeup like that was her job I was like on doing the food and helping out with the changes of outfits but I was so lucky to have her I would be a zombie right now if it wasn't for <laughs> and my girls wouldn't have looked as good like she did such a good job on their hair and makeup they literally and I don't think I'm biased but I'm sure that I am my girls look the best. I mean, they looked so amazing. Anyways, um, it was a really fun weekend. It was exhausting. Um, my girls danced their hearts out. They put 110% into their dances. And yesterday, I went on my long run and Nate usually bikes alongside me. And so it's kind of our time to connect and talk about things. And so we were talking about the recital and just Kind of our observations and what we thought about it and everything and um one of the things we were talking about was noticing the difference between the dancers of the different age groups so um one thing nate was saying was he said you know i was kind of disappointed with the seniors and the people that are and the dancers that are like in college the oldest age groups because he said it seemed like they really didn't dance with all their heart like they didn't put a hundred percent into their dancing and he said you know I think because they've arrived like they have you know they're basically there's about ten of them that are assistant teachers to Charity who's in charge of Solomon's and she's like the main teacher but she's like 10 assistants and so all those assistants are like the head dancers they teach the dances and and then they perform like the senior dances and everything um, but he said I think because they're the teachers they've already like gotten that position so they just don't have to try as hard anymore and I said, yeah, I noticed the same thing because like the juniors and even even the kids in like um, seventh and eighth grade and, and some of them even below that, fourth, fifth and sixth grade, like in some of their dances, they were actually better. They look like better dancers. Like they were 
as a whole, as a group, they danced together better. Um, they were really putting, you know, all of their energy into their dances. You know, because they're still working, they're still working their way up, right? And it just got me thinking, like, I, as much as, you know, we want to figure life out and we want to, like, be able to master this crazy, weird thing that we are all doing, which is called, like, humaning on this planet, like, at the same time, I actually don't want to arrive. I don't ever want to get to a position where, like, yes, now I've figured it out. Um... So I'm here, I've learned it all. Because at that point, you stop trying. You stop giving all of your energy and, and you can become lazy about it. And, you know, I don't think anybody ever figures life out. I don't even think that's possible. But I, I do see a lot in adults. And I was noticing this even like spending so much time with all the other dance moms feeling like, okay, here's the kids that are, hi, Rihanna, being is here to say hi to us. Um, so I'm getting hot. I'm going to unzip my jacket a little bit. Noticing this with the, the dance moms too, that here's their, their kids, you know, who are working really hard in recital and have to do all these things and perform. And then the moms, like, they just, I don't know. I, I don't, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, um, be negative about other people. No, you can't have my stuff. What are you doing? She wants an itch. Rihanna is very itchy. Um, it just kind of seems like adults quit in life. Like they'll talk about what they used to do and things they did growing up. It's like then you become an adult and then you just kind of settle into this. I, I get up, I go to work, you know, I feed the kids and I take, to, take the kids to all the things the kids are doing. and. And they kind of lose their passion for the things that they love to do. Or they just don't pursue that passion anymore because, you know, now you have to adult. And adults don't get to play and do the things they love to do anymore. And I just cannot disagree more. Like, I think we need to keep living. We need to keep going after the things we love. We need to keep learning and growing and I just don't want to, it was this really good picture of like, I don't want to ever quit living in life and be like, you know, I used to do all this, but you know, now I'm a mom and I have kids and I got to make money and pay the bills. And, and so we just, we just quit. And I, I think about how many people have died and are in those cemeteries that got to a point in their life where they didn't, they weren't truly living. There's a point that there's a um, point in that song that says, um, all we can do is try and live like we're still alive. Wow, it's really windy. You're going to probably hear the gust. Um, but I found that so true. Like, just because we're, our heart is beating and we're still living doesn't mean we're actually living like we're still alive. Like, are we doing the things we love? Are we valuing ourselves enough to pursue those things? That's what I want to do, and I never want to quit doing that. I don't want to become the dancer that's arrived and that's just like, ah, you yeah, know, here I am. Yeah, I can do this and this, but you know, now I teach other people to dance. No, I still want to dance and love it and put my whole heart into it my whole life. Like not just for a certain season to be able to achieve this level of this status, you know. I don't want to quit. I don't want to quit being alive. And I want to encourage all of you listening to this, that whether you're a mom or a partner or, uh, you know, working all the time or all of those things, you do not have to give up being alive. Keep pursuing those things that make you feel alive. Value yourself enough to take time to pursue your own passions, not just take your kids to pursue their passions, but that you are still continually pursuing your own passions. Like that to me is living. 
That's being alive. Why the hell are we here then? Just to have fun as kids and then we gotta be boring old farts when we're adults? Like, I don't want that. No, I, I reject that. <laughs> That's what Jennifer says to me when I say something that she thinks is stupid. <laughs> or like, usually I'm coming from a place of like, well, I, I probably should just this. She's like, no, I reject that. I love it. Anyways, I just feel really strongly that it's this problem in our society that teaches us that we don't get to continue having fun and pursuing the things that keep us wanting to live, that keep us loving our lives. No, Raina. There we go. Space. Rain is trying to... What is it? Back up a little bit. I know. You're looking for Tanea, aren't you? Um, so, anyways. Okay, so back to the dancing. I wanted to... Um, I was talking to my girls about it. And, um, you know, we were also thinking about some of the dancers were in like 14 different dances. And the thing I noticed about that too was like, they, they couldn't dance those dances as well because they were, there was too much for their brain to remember. And so um, I was thinking about, you know, if we take on too many things, it's like doing a lot of things, but not very well. So it's another thing I wanna, be aware of in my life um, because there's lots of things I love doing but I'd rather do just a few things really good a hundred percent than do like a million things sort of good so I don't know it was good it was good and it just reminded me that I don't want to be someone who gets stuck in the rat race of life. And I know I talk about this over and over and over again, um, but it's just so easy. Can I find myself easily getting sucked up into that? I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. And then I'm like stuck in this stress, horrible stress place. And I don't like that. I don't. And so it's a continual returning. No, I don't want to do that. So like, today um, and I talked last week about like trying to dig into why is it hard for me to not be doing and accomplishing all the time and so today I really try to be aware to take care of myself to love myself and to honor what I needed today so I told you about our crazy weekend how busy we were and it was exhausting and it was late, late nights and early, early mornings. Um, so I knew that I was gonna be really tired this morning. So I let myself sleep in, that was the first thing. Um, for me, sleeping until 7.30 is really sleeping in. So usually like I'm up at 5.30. So I told myself, you need to sleep in as long as your body needs. So I woke up a few times, but I just kept saying, no, don't look at the alarm clock, just, allow your because if I see the time like then my brain starts going and I can't shut it off so I just like don't look at the time roll over go back to sleep so I slept until 7 30 and then I got up and I did the animals and I took time to take Dale on a long walk brought the horses in had to do all of Dale's medications and put honey on his wound and all of that takes a, it's a huge process and then I noticed like my body felt really sore and it was kind of hurting. And I did a long run yesterday of six miles and I just felt like I needed to stretch. And usually I'm really good at just ignoring those things. But I thought I'm not gonna ignore anything today. I'm gonna listen to my body. So I took like 10, 15 minutes to stretch and just keep stretching and do all the stretches that I felt like I needed until I was feeling better. And then I went for a run and I usually go three miles on Monday morning, but I just, my body was tired and I thought, I'm just gonna do two miles today. So I just ran two miles and when I was done, I went back and I stretched more. And that's the one thing 
I'm not good at, okay? So I love exercising, but I hate stretching, people. <laughs> I hate it so much. I don't know why I hate it. Because I think because I'm so bad at it, and it seems like no matter how hard I try, I'm just still really bad at it. But the truth is I don't try really, really hard. So <laughs> um, I probably, if I did it 30 minutes every single day, I'm sure I'd get better. But anyways, I made myself stretch afterwards. I went back and did a bunch of stretching. And then I got a nice shower and I took some time to make myself a really nice breakfast. And I just took my time this morning. Instead of jumping out of bed and hitting the floor, running and instantly stressed out, thinking about all the stuff I have to get done, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take the time that I need today to take care of my body. Um, and then you might notice I don't have my normal coffee cup with me today because I'm not drinking coffee. I drank, I have a horse in my mouth. <laughs> I drank so much coffee over the weekend to be able to stay awake and survive that by yesterday I was like, no, I cannot drink any more coffee. Like I didn't even want it, which you guys know me. I love coffee so much. I literally woke up yesterday morning and was like, I don't want any coffee. I don't even want to taste it. Like, and I was like, wow, listen to your body. So yesterday I made myself golden milk which is like milk with turmeric and ginger and cinnamon and vanilla. It was really yummy, but it felt very healing to my system. And so today I made myself mate tea, which is a green tea. Um, and it's just like these seem small, but they're huge for me. Learning to value myself and listen to my body and give myself what I need and realize like this is part of being alive in my life. This is part of living fully and completely because I, it's not, li like I talked about last week, it's not living to just be, fill your life up packed, jam-packed full of stuff and be stressed and exhausted. To me, that's not living either. Living is enjoying your life. It's wanting to wake up every day. It's feeling alive inside. And so for me, I am a very much a go-go person, so I have to pull back and say, no, I'm going to take today I have time and allow myself to rest, rejuvenate, to go slow, to not feel stressed. Like, so this was me being alive today, was going slow this morning. And for every person, it's going to look different. It's going to look different. But you will know. You will know what your body needs, and you will know what makes you feel alive if you take the time to check in with yourself, to ask yourself, to pay attention, to stop for a minute, stop for a second, stop, stop for 10 seconds, literally, and check in with yourself. Ask yourself, am I happy with my life? Do I feel alive? What changes can I make? What choices do I have? Well, how can I change it to make it mine? To tailor it just for me and my needs and my need, uh, not just my needs, but my wants and my desires. Like, this is your fucking beautiful life. You get to live it. So whatever that looks like for you this week, I encourage you, do do it. Start making the small steps. Do what it, and it's going to feel different today than it did yesterday. And then it will tomorrow, every day, you're going to tweak it a little bit. And yes, you're going to get like me to where you, you have to always return and rebalance and kind of realign with your values because we get out of whack, you know, and things come and they throw us off balance. And that happens to me on a regular fucking basis. <laughs> like just when I'm like, okay, all right. I think I've got kind of things working well. My schedule's figured out. I feel pretty good about it. Then sh pfft, something comes and just throws everything off. And I feel like, oh my God, I got to start all over again. But I also think that every time I get a little bit better, I fine tune it a little bit more. I make it more mine and more, more honoring to who I am and who I want to become. So... <sighs> I think that's it for today, guys. I love you all so much. Um, thanks for, for showing up today. And yeah, 
I hope you <laughs> I hope you have a good week it's just the beginning right and we don't know what's gonna happen but don't forget like you do not know what life will bring you and what life holds but you can hold yourself so in the midst of whatever happens this week whether it's your well pump dying or your dog getting attacked or who knows the bubonic plague <laughs> you can always know and be assured that you have your own back and you can make the choices every day to do the little things that are honoring to you that make you feel alive that want you that make you want to live right Ugh. all right i gotta be done my butt's falling asleep <laughs> sitting in this position on the horse trailer i love you guys it's been wonderful and uh oh so here's your homework you need to go listen to that song you need to listen to it if you cannot listen to it right now make a note to listen to it later when you're done working but do not forget it's called chasing the sun by Sarah Borelli's. It's, I know that Sarah is S-A-R-A. -A, there's no H. Um, I'm trying to, I didn't realize that I didn't have the uh, spelling here on my, <laughs> on my paper. Uh, Borelli's is something, some, somewhere close to B-A-R-E-L-L-I-E-S, -L 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 -E I think. Anyways, when you look it up, you'll be able to find it. Listen to the song, play it loud. You need to play the song really loud, okay? And I, because I want you to feel the song. I want you to feel it in your bones. And if you're brave, I want you to dance to it. Whatever that looks like for you, move your body, feel it in your soul, and remember that life is about living as if you are alive. I love you. I'll see you next week. Peace out, my friends. <laughs> Bye, everybody.